because who doesn't love good decisions? I know I do. Hello, hello. We are back in business today to finish what we started, and that is comparing data science and software engineering to help you make the right decision for you. If you didn't watch part one yet, pause this video right now and go check it out, but hurry home because I'll be waiting here for you. Anyway, now that you've watched part one, you know everything there is to know about the jobs of data science versus software engineering, including pros, cons, differences, similarities, work-life balance, salary, etc. We also covered long-term job availability, availability, and some final tips to help you choose between the two. So now, in today's video, we will be covering everything there is to know about breaking into each field, how to actually land a job in each field. You will either take the formal education approach, or you can take the alternative approach. Exploring these two education paths will make up the very first part of this video, and then we'll end off the video with a comparison of the interview process for each of the roles. All right, let's dive in. Starting with education path numero uno, academic degree programs. Most existing and aspiring software engineering candidates have degrees in computer science, software engineering, or some other sort of engineering flavor. Could be systems, could be electrical, or could be really any of the millions of engineering names that university programs come up with, which don't really matter in the end because most of them just end up being software engineers anyway. But I digress. We also see a hefty number of software engineers coming from quantitative fields like math or physics. And these are pretty much just the theoretical equivalent degrees to computer science and software engineering for people who enjoy breaking down problems and implementing solutions to them. And because sister domain data science is also rooted in breaking down problems and implementing solutions, we see a very similar mix of backgrounds within data scientists. The majority of data scientists come from a pretty even split of math and computer science, sprinkle in some physics majors and engineers, and then finally add a dash from other quantitative fields like finance or economics. Also in the last five years or so, data science has become special enough to earn its own program at a lot of universities. So you can actually get a data science degree, either bachelor's or master's at many schools now. These are a very focused combination of math and computer science courses that are specifically the ones you need for data science. So it's obviously a great choice if you know for sure it's what you want to do. Now, if you want to break into these careers from an unrelated background and without going through the process of getting a formal degree, no matter how you learn, the most important thing coming out of your training for both data science or software engineering is a portfolio of projects that demonstrates that you learned what you needed to learn to be able to deliver for the job. So once you have this portfolio of projects for both careers, I would personally say the best way to break into them without a formal degree is to make a lateral move at a company that you're already working at. What does this mean exactly? It means to start or continue working within a role that you're currently qualified for at a company that hires data scientists or software engineers, depending on which one you're interested in. While you're in your current role, you cozy up to the coding cuties in your dream role, and you learn from them what it takes to be good at the job that they're doing. Talk to them about what they're working on, learn about the skills that they have, maybe shadow them on a project or two. And then eventually one day when an opportunity opens up within that role at your company, guess who's available? You are. You can just mosey on in there and get your dream job. You already know what it takes. You're already in the company. It's a win-win for everybody. This is the number one way that I've seen people transition into technical jobs from other backgrounds, especially for data science roles. I will caveat this by saying I've only personally seen it work at tech companies. And this is because they have both the abundance of software engineering and data science opportunities and the infrastructure to provide mentorship, training, and support for each of these roles. So this is my recommendation if you wanna break in, get a job at a tech company in your current role, transition within the company, boom. If for whatever reason you can 
cannot do a lateral move like this and you need to rely purely on alternative training methods, there are some notable differences to consider when deciding if you want to do so for data science or software engineering. In my experience, if you want to enter from a completely unrelated career path and limited formal academic training, it's easier to do so for software engineering. This is logical because the career has existed in a mainstream capacity for a longer period of time than data science has. As a result, the alternative training programs have had more time to understand how to effectively teach the skills that are needed for the job, and more significantly, they've had more time to gain trust and respect from the industry and the people hiring for it. Now, don't get it twisted. Will there be challenges in landing a job after a boot camp when compared to formal education? Yes, of course. It's always going to be easier if you have a degree, but it is doable without one. Now, for data science, it's a bit of a wah, 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 because I can't say that I've personally ever met a boot camp grad working as a data scientist without having a formal degree. It doesn't mean it's not possible and that they don't exist. It just means that it's more rare, so it's probably more difficult to break into the career this way. However, there are plenty of amazing resources online to be able to learn data science on your own, and these include courses coming from reputable institutions like Google and Stanford. So definitely take advantage of what's out there online. So that being said, I have met data scientists who have gained all or most of their skills from self-studying online, and they now have lovely jobs at great tech companies. I'll caveat this by saying that all of these data scientists that I'm referring to do have university degrees, both in slightly related and not directly related backgrounds. In general, data science hiring managers tend to place more emphasis on academia, especially in roles that are centered around building and maintaining models. Why? Because what's underneath the hood of these models is a whole lot of math that you really need to understand, and people tend to learn math in an academic setting. So it's just kind of the way the cookie crumbles. Check out my how to learn data science video for more info on this topic as a whole. All right, now that you've learned your skills, qualified yourself as a certified coding cutie, it's time to pass that interview process. The interview process is quite similar for both roles. It usually starts off with an HR screening call that includes a light behavioral assessment or a skills assessment to gauge general interest and fit for the role. So they're looking if there's a fit on both sides at a high level in this first stage. After passing this, there is usually a technical assessment of some sort in the form of something like a take home test or assignment, probably most commonly a live one on one coding interview through a software like CoderPad. Once you pass this, you will have anywhere from one to far too many additional interviews with the hiring manager and a series of stakeholders who will be assessing your behavioral and technical skill set as it pertains to the role. Nine out of 10 times, if not 10 out of 10 times, this will include a problem solving section where they will give you some sort of case study that's related to the job and see how you would tackle the problem, how you would break it down and the steps you would take to solve it. Now, when it comes to the differences, I find that software engineering interviews are more consistent in terms of the questions that they ask but they're also more consistently challenging. And this is especially the case at tech companies where the technical assessments are the most rigid and difficult to pass. It's probably because there are so many ways to break into software engineering that the interview process for these roles is used as a way to filter out the strongest candidates. Keep in mind that software engineering roles have a relatively low barrier to entry. You don't even need a degree to work as a software engineer. And this is pretty insane when you compare it to other types of jobs that make a comparable amount of money. So although you might get frustrated that the interview process is difficult, it's there for a reason. They need some way to be able to pick out the best apples from the bunch. Now, data science interviews are less consistent and all over the map when you compare them across industries. Sometimes at a data science interview, they expect you to have the computer science skills of a software engineer the communication skills of a used car salesman, and the additional deep knowledge of statistics and machine learning algorithms of a Stanford University professor. Personally, interviews with expectations like this are the source of most of my nightmares and all of my imposter syndrome because I have never passed one. 
The good news is there are far fewer of these unicorn quests than there are fair data science interviews. And I feel like I'm seeing less and less of them. People are starting to understand that a data scientist is not a wizard. Surprisingly, I've actually found that data science interviews are more fair and straightforward at tech companies than they are at non-tech companies that still hire a lot of data scientists like in banking and insurance. They're typically very practical and specific to the role that they're hiring you for. If you want a deep dive on data science interviews, I have a whole other video for that. So check that one out if you want more info on this topic. All right, now that you have the facts, I have some final takeaways for you before I release you into the wild west that is the tech industry. One, it will be easier to break into either field if you have a university degree. You don't need 17 degrees. One is more than enough to break in. Getting further degrees, a master's or a PhD may help for some roles, especially in data science, but it's not necessary. Two, if you decide to get a degree, study something technical, something that teaches you how to break down problems and implement solutions, preferably through code. Three, if you are not getting a formal education, I recommend breaking into either career through self-teaching, building a portfolio of projects that demonstrate your skills, and then making a lateral transition through a company from a role that you're currently qualified for into the role you want to have. Four, if you cannot do this and you don't have a degree, you're more likely to get a role in software engineering than in data science. Five. Oh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. I just have four. Okay. <clears throat> That's all from me. Let me know if you have questions. I will catch you in the comments if you want to leave your thoughts or tell me what else you want to see next. Otherwise, I will see you in the video. Thank you so much for watching and have a data delicious day. Bye.